Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We're continuing our very nerdy, thought-provoking reading of St. Augustine's Confessions. We are in book one, paragraph number six. Let's begin. But neither my mother nor my nurses filled their breasts of their own accord, for it was you who used them. So, what is he getting at? Uh, when he means nurses, he means milkmaids. Uh, you know, women who feed babies with their breasts. It's very cool. Very interesting how these women were uh, very awesome in how they uh, offered their milk to needy babies. And uh, gave mothers time to travel and stuff. So, pretty awesome. And here he's admitting in a very unique way that it's God who allows the milk to even be processed to occur because there was a time where this was a very big deal if you didn't make milk for your little one it'd be a huge problem especially if there wasn't uh, enough women around to help nurse right and in case you didn't know the size doesn't matter when it comes to production right they can refill uh, quite often and if you didn't know the more your baby nurses the more your body will produce and when your baby gets older and needs to feed less your body will slow down production okay in case you didn't know so I thought that was very nice he continues as your law prescribes to give me infants food and share of the riches which you distribute even among the very humblest of all things all created things so share of the riches so God distributing riches bounty to every creature even the most humblest this reminds me of the ants in the Quran where Suleiman his army is approaching and Allah Aswajal tells them to move out of the way which is you know their ants are hard-working very important to the biome and for them to be told to move out of the way so they don't get treaded upon shows that Allah Asabajal cares about creation, right? Doesn't mean there's not going to be suffering in the world because ants, when they conquer another colony, are quite brutal. They rip apart the queen. <laughs> if you ever watch that, it's, it's pretty intense. I've watched a lot of those videos. Uh, but it is interesting how in Islam, we have one of Allah's attributes and names uh, the most beneficent, you know, it's full of bounty. The, the owner of all provision, right? So here you can kind of see the Catholic perspective has a similar thing as well. It was also by your gift that I did not wish for more than you gave. And that my nurses gladly passed on to me what you gave to them. So notice this, gladly passed on. So he's pointing out these were good women who were given the ability to produce milk and they were such good character that they wanted to do it. How many women, you know, especially if they have a stuck up feminist, hairy armpit, really rude feminist who just glorifies abortion and, you know, hates straight men, you know, she might be more, more bitter, right? And they're very empowered. so. Maybe they won't even nurse, but here you see a really cool example of this sort of traditional, humble, nurturing women who like children, don't want to see them dismembered for Planned Parenthood, and want to help keep the child alive. When you put a child who isn't yours, even if you're getting paid, at your breast to feed, you are doing an immense mercy to that child. You have an immense mercy. It takes really good loving character. There's some people who wouldn't even feed their neighbor's dog, let alone pop out their breasts so that they can nurse a crying baby. Okay, The women today are extremely cold, vapid, and vain. Uh, not saying there wasn't some you know women like that back then, but it just appears that you know the women were of a better caliber than today. You know? making a bottle and shaking it and putting it in the baby's mouth, they get colicky and they're screaming because they have bloated gas because it's highly unnatural to have that formulated crap. Uh, yeah, 
It's different. It doesn't take the same level of love. To make a bottle with water and the stupid powder and give it to the baby, it's not the same amount of love. When you actually allow your body to make food for an innocent child that is not related to you genetically, that takes way more love, courage, and honor than, you know, formula, in my humble opinion. So I like that he gives credit to that. They did this because they love me in the way that you had ordained. So here he's talking about, you know, the faculties of the, what the women were given. And their love made them anxious to give to me what they had received in plenty from you. So notice, made them anxious to give to me. So like, oh, like there's a deep anxiousness when you nurse. Like you, sometimes even when the baby cries, your ears hear it and you will start leaking. It's amazing. Okay. It is really amazing because your body and your ears, your senses, like, they're a part of you, but they know what to do, right? So, the anxiousness is real. I get very anxious when I hear babies cry. Not in a mean way, but I'm like, someone help the baby, right? So, it's very different than, like, Anna Kasparian who says, you know, having a dog is the same as having a baby. When she does news segments, she shows pictures of crying children She's a very, you know, negative women type of consciousness. She has a very almost demonic, mean, cold, vapid, intense, corporate, empowered women vibe towards children. And you're like, ugh. Like, you want to keep your child away from her. It's sort of that um, character like Maleficent that Angelina Jolie played. It's just like, ugh. You know, so here you see a, a different approach to women who like to help children and are anxious to help them and they feel mercy towards them and they want to actually bring the child close. It's so much love, especially as a mother. I can connect with what St. Augustine is saying here because that warmness in your heart towards that innocent little child is very different than the cold, brutal, high heel catty nature we see today that despises children and marches to dismember them it's quite a different energy as you can see and he's giving credit to god right that god made their milk flow plentifully and made them have the attributes you know that he ordained for them in terms of wanting to share of their you know nutrition to the little baby so he does many compliments in just this little part. For it was to their own good that what was good for me should come to me from them. Though, of course, it could not come to me from them, through them, from you. So here, but through them, from you. Yes, that's a good point. Because you, my God, are the source of all good. So here, you know, God is the source of all good. You see the another Catholic perspective. And everywhere you preserve me. Everywhere. So God being the sustainer. This preserver. All this I have learned since then. Because all the gifts you had given to me. So here again he's thanking God for the gifts. So previously you saw that he, you know, said that they were given attributes to feed and sustain babies he showed how his mother had the same thing then he pointed out how god distributes even to the most humblest of creatures to distribute you know gifts of plentiful things and then here he does it again with his self and he says both spiritual and material so again it's really getting at the best of both worlds spiritual in terms of the anxious love that those women felt and then the material as in the literal material milk right the emotion the endearment the kindness the excellent role models right nurturing mothers have a spiritual energy which is quite different than a woman who you know drinks a lot sterilizes her womb has had six abortions uh, and hates straight men right it's a hyper different total different view 
than a woman who's had six children and she has sandals on and she's cooking homemade bread and has a dairy cow that she milks and has a very nurturing homey vibe it's very different like a homestead wife who's religious versus an atheist secular feminist liberal who's in the city and drinks martinis every other day it's a very different energy so when he mentions that you know god gave him spiritual and material blessings and gifts we can all see how he's right and then with the previous examples of the women you see he's building upon a larger point you know how vulnerable he was as a humble little baby and how he was aided right it's really interesting very interesting proclaim the truth of it but in those days all i knew was how to suck and how to lie still when my body sensed comfort or cry when i felt pain so here he's getting at you know how our little baby is to eat to hold still which <laughs> certain babies they do do that <laughs> it's so cute and they cry when they feel pain when they're hungry when they have to go potty when you have to burp them but there are babies who when they're really little they just sit and observe and it's super cute they're so vulnerable and they start crawling around you know ripping up paper you know making sure you know they give you a little pull on your hair or whatever they want to do it's super cute but for a while yes they are very limited in what they can do which shows how humble they are and how God provides provision for those little babies and how wonderful that is so again he had a very cool point here uh, and gave a lot of cool energy towards women I have to say what do you think fam very beautiful I must say <laughs>